Welcome to the Rotating Cast Files, the podcast where sometimes we change what show we're talking about. <laughs> can you tell what I've been binging over the break? Yes. <laughs> yes, I can. We just wanted to pop in here at the beginning of episode one of Crazy Head to say thank you for checking us out, any new listeners. We really appreciate it. This is a good show, and I can see why you would want to listen to a podcast about it. <laughs> I'm happy that you have chosen us. And if you are continuing over from the end of season three of The X-Files, welcome. We're doing a different show. Thank you very much for continuing with us. Yes. That means you like us and not just The X-Files, which, <laughs> which is great. It feels so nice to be liked. <laughs> also, if you have any questions or comments, you can find us on Instagram at Cast Files. We're also on Twitter. At but Cast I don't. Files, but yeah. And also at Cast Files, but I don't go there. It gets ignored. Or email us at therotatingcastfiles at gmail.com. We hope you enjoy it. So, you'd better. <laughs> Greetings, listeners, domestic, international, and demonically possessed. <laughs> I'm Dave Reed. And I'm Kristen Riley. And this is The Rotating Cast Files. This is a podcast where we watch and discuss those TV shows that were canceled too soon. Or were they? Probably. Otherwise, we're watching some crappy TV shows. I know. We'll see. So far, <laughs> too soon. Today, we're talking about Crazy Head Season 1, Episode 1, A Very Trippy Horse. It was written by Howard Overman, who also created the show, and directed by Al McKay. So IMDb says, when Amy, a bowling alley worker, encounters a violent demon that only she can see, the self-made demon hunter Raquel comes to her rescue. The pair must become allies when a demon possesses Amy's best friend, Suzanne. It's a good summary, but it's contradictory because obviously Amy is not the only one who can see that demon. Right? I was thinking <laughs> the same thing. What? Come uh, on. Other than that, good summary. It pretty much tells you what the beginning, middle, and end is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In the cold open, which may or may not be a cold open, but it's definitely an open. Yeah, it's after the credits, the opening credits, but it feels like a cold open. It does, but also it's the end. My only friend, the end. So we open and we're driving down a lonely road at night, which I was like, I mean, this could be aliens. I guess so. <laughs> Definitely was an intention grabber. Yes. At, at the very start. Yes. Somebody kidnapped and tied up in a trunk. That's right. We arrive at a warehouse, but did you notice that not only was it a warehouse, it was a warehouse with two of the doors wide open. Ooh, maybe the kidnappers, whoever they are, <laughs> got there early and prepped. They literally didn't. <laughs> You don't think that these two seem like the type that get oh my God. anywhere early in prep? Everything in this episode says no. <laughs> okay. If I were a magic eight ball, I would be like, fuck, no, they didn't prepare for this. Well, that's a little specific for a magic eight ball. <laughs> I'm a very specific. Very specific magic eight you ball. You have to ask very specific <laughs> questions that can be answered in eight different ways. That's nice. All right. So I love the details here. We've got... A great play on color. It's really dark because it's nighttime and they're in a warehouse, but everybody's wearing bright colors mm -hmm. and patterns. I like the way when they first open up the trunk, the clown masks are terrifying. They are. They're so scary. But then when you see them in the light, they're not that. I know. It's so good. <laughs> it's very well done. So we definitely have the crazy clown masks that the two kidnappers are wearing. We have pink fuzzy bunny slippers that we get to see dragged across the concrete floor. You know it's rough when you get got in your slippers. It's it's pretty rough. Um, the kidnapped woman recognizes the jacket. She's like, uh, so she's dragged out of the trunk and tied down to the floor. Yes. All very scary. Yes, it is very scary. And then she's like. Wait a second. You can see the realization or the recognition, the mm -hmm. moment of recognition. It's played so well. And she's like, Amy, that's my jacket. I know that's you because that's my jacket. And then Amy says, <laughs> and Suzanne goes, I can't understand you. <laughs> so she takes her mask off. It's, I guess when you know you're got, when you're caught, you might as well 
Take your mask off. One, when you know that you're caught, and two, when you're a terrible kidnapper. And Suzanne, you gave me this jacket. It's my jacket now. Also, you have you to can't argue. Say. You have to argue no take backsies. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no take backsies are very important when you're in your early twenties. It was it was great because now we've got Suzanne tied to the concrete floor, and we have Amy. One of the kidnappers who's now showing her face with her mask on her head. And then you just have the other person yeah. yet to be revealed standing there with the scary mask still on being like, girls, not now. <laughs> the serious one. Yes. Really. Yes. So Suzanne is played by Ryan Steele. Ryan Steele is also known for working alongside David Tennant and Patrick Stewart in the Royal Shakespeare Company productions, including Hamlet. Wow. Impressive. Right. <laughs> I just had to stop there for a moment because got to let that sink in. Holy bananas. That's impressive. Um, so she's also in Doctor Who, which isn't surprising. If you work with David Tennant on anything else, I think you, you end have up, to be in Doctor you Who. You end up in Doctor Who. I'm not sure if it originates with Doctor Who or if it culminates in Doctor Who. Probably but. culminates. Doctor Who, you know David Tennant's the first person to ever be the Doctor twice. I have heard that. He just became the Doctor again. I have heard that and I have seen one episode of Doctor Who and it was the scary one where if you yeah, turn your back angels. on the angels, they will I think it's the only kill you. Doctor Who episode for like a lot of people. It's good. If it's you're gonna watching. If you're gonna watch Doctor Who or if you're not going to watch Doctor Who, watch that episode. <laughs> yes. And then we have Kara Theobald as Amy, yes. who was in Downton Abbey. Yes. A show I watched a couple of, maybe the first season of, and then didn't have access to it anymore. <laughs> I think that's how that happened. And then she was also in Ready Player One. She was in Zomboat. Zomboat. Well, I mean, clearly that's where everybody knows her from. Um, she's also the voice of... A voice in World of Warcraft Dragonflight. Yeah, lots of... Overwatch uh, 2. Video games. Diablo Immortal. Elden Ring. I, that's the end of the back-to-back -back <laughs> list there. That's the end of that. Yeah, did you see Ready Player One? No, I read the book. I never watched the movie. Ready Player One is the book that Riley and I read together when we read 85% of it and went... We Done. Don't, we don't need <laughs> any more of this. That's rough. It, that is rough when you get that far in and then you both look at each other and you're like, we don't have to keep doing this. It's fine. <laughs> All right. So that's who we have so far. Suzanne and Amy bicker. Amy tells Suzanne that she's going to exercise her. Why is she? Oh, because you that's told right. me I needed a belt with my pajamas. That's right. <laughs> and then you tried to strangle me. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I stopped typing in the middle of that sentence in, in my recap. Yes. And so I was like, I can't wait to see what this is, because who who in their right mind would say wear a belt with your pajamas? Utterly ridiculous. It's the most ridiculous thing. It's much more ridiculous than peeing on your roommate. Which is she is instructed next to do by the third person. Yep. Who is Susan Wacoma? That is Raquel. She is in Enola Holmes. Both of the Enola Holmes movies. Yes. But I know her uh, as the sister in Chewing Gum. Great show. Fantastic show. Don't know about Enola Holmes, but I do know that by following Susan Wacoma on Instagram, and she's just been ecstatic being on that show, <laughs> being at the premiere, doing all the stuff, it being released. Like it has been just a waterfall on my, my IG. Excellent. Yeah. Good for her. Super fun. She looks amazing. She's got some fun art in her house. Follow her. <laughs> <laughs> so while Su Suzanne and Amy are bickering, at one point, <laughs> Raquel is, oh, they're saying, but I have to exercise you because I love you and I love you. And so that's when Raquel goes, are you gay? And they both look at her because she's still got her mask on and she lifts her mask up. So now we can, now everybody's exposed. And, and they're like, what? And she's like, are you gay? I mean, it's fine if you are, which is one of those things that people say when they should have just kept their thoughts inside their head. <laughs> but we'll find out that Raquel doesn't keep her thoughts inside her head. Uh, so Amy comes over to Raquel and says, all right, what do we do? How do we, how do we start this exorcism? And it turns out the first step in exercising someone is peeing on them. Because you got to mark them like a lion. 
even though it doesn't say like a lion, but she used that because it sounded like it would be helpful. And it is very evocative. <laughs> so then Amy and Raquel bicker over who's going to pee on Suzanne. And Raquel declines because she took a very long wee before they came out. So she, her tank is empty. She's sorry. Can't help you here. Also, Amy's wearing a skirt, so it's just kind of easier for her to do it. Also, it's Amy's bestie. Yeah. If anybody's going to pee on you, it should probably be your bestie. That's what I always say. All right, shirts. <laughs> <laughs> so we start this whole this whole episode with a kidnapping, scary clowns, and peeing on your roommate. We're off to a good start. We go to three days ago. Three days prior. Amy... Amy is in her psychiatrist? Yes. Amy office. is in some doctor's office, going off of her meds and expressing her concerns. Yes. That she might get diarrhea. Well, that wasn't her concern until he <laughs> made it her concern. He says, it's great that you're going off your meds, whatever we're supposed to take from this. Uh, you'll probably be fine. You're not going to go crazy, but you also may shit yourself. What is this drug? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, but withdrawals are... A bitch. Yeah. But if you're going off your psychiatric medication at the behest of your psychiatrist, which is the way that it's supposed to go, it shouldn't be that jarring. It shouldn't be so jarring that you may or may not shit yourself. Well, you know, England has a different healthcare system than we do. I guess. <laughs> so then, so then Amy's like, all right, I guess I'm done. She, so she goes to a nightclub. In the nightclub, Raquel is hiding from someone. She grabs a guy and kisses him, but the man who's tracking her sees her anyway. The guy she grabs and makes out with the surprise kiss seems pretty into it. He seems okay. <laughs> we know how the Bechtel cast, and also how I feel, we don't know how I feel, but I don't think surprise kisses are a good idea. But this guy, she, I mean... She chose right for a surprise kiss. He was in. He was like, I've already taken this drug that's about to come up. <laughs> the very trippy horse drug. Yes. Don't worry. I have the ingredients. Raquel runs, runs by. Amy turns around and notices Raquel run by. And then Amy watches as the guy chasing her runs by. But we don't see anything unusual besides running, which is a very strange thing to happen inside a nightclub. I don't know if you've ever been in a nightclub. But it would be jarring to see somebody running in a nightclub. I see. <laughs> You're not going to answer if you've been I, in a nightclub or not. Nope. I'm <laughs> leaving that a mystery. Nobody out there needs to know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a very private thing. I see. Sorry I even mentioned it. <laughs> so now we switch over to uh, following Amy because we were watching Raquel in the nightclub for a bit. I do love how they transition, do these transitions, because it's so smooth. Amy is talking to Jake. We'll find out his name's Jake in a bit, or maybe she says it here. I don't know. I only remember it because in the next scene or the next one of the next scenes, it actually says Jake on his shirt. And I was like, ah, your name's Jake. <laughs> so he is trying to get her to take whatever it is that he's he has, and he's like, what? You don't want to feel like... No, it, what did he say? It'll make you feel like two people are... Two lovers banging you out? Two lovers banging you out, yeah. And she's like, what? And he's like, look, it's got X, acid, and horse tranquilizers <laughs> in... I think he said vodka. I don't know. It's a lot of stuff. I left out the actual alcohol part of it, but X, acid, and horse tranquilizers... It's like having sex with a very trippy horse, which is where the title comes from. She and says, no, I would not like that. No, 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 thank you. And he's like, I don't understand women. And <laughs> then he takes this shot, which we understand, Jake. You don't understand women. Then we see Amy go over to Suzanne, who she is trying to talk out of sleeping with the most awful guy at the club. They say that Matt has incredible hair. And as someone who appreciates really good hair... I have to say, no, this guy does not have really good hair. This guy thinks he has really good hair. Yeah, but then so does everybody else. They're all wrong. <laughs> Every one of them. And, and he says that they don't have haircuts in Thailand. Which is just weird. The, well, yes, we'll, we'll get to that. At this point, before we go meet 
hair guy. Amy and is trying to talk Raquel out of having sex with them. Editor's note, that's Suzanne, but you know what she meant. And Raquel's like, but it's like bungee jumping. And Amy's like, bungee jumping doesn't give you herpes, which is a little STI shamey, but also like this guy's definitely not one to wear a condom. It doesn't seem that way. I just, it feels like it would be an argument, <laughs> which is not the kind of person you want to sleep with. <laughs> So that's, I guess he walks up. I don't know. He he comes into the picture and that's <laughs> when Amy goes, I like your hair. Like, Did you get it cut in Thailand? And he's like, they don't really have haircuts in Thailand because <laughs> if you look, they all have the same haircut. <laughs> and Amy's like, that's not even remotely true. What are you even talking about? Fortunately, Amy is better than me right now. And she names a Thai hairstylist. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I also didn't. Oh, yeah. So me and Matt were in the same boat for a second there. <laughs> How was it? Were you guys getting all snuggly? No. Talking not, hair? Not at all. His hair was so hairsprayed. It was not good. It was so hairsprayed. And yeah, so he ha- he doesn't know who she's talking about. Her friend doesn't. And so she's just like, all right, I'm going to go have a smoke. So she leaves. But before she leaves or as she's leaving, she tells Suzanne to enjoy your bungee jump. While out in the parking lot... Amy sees a demon, although she does believe she's hallucinating, which would be scary. Well, you know what? Either way, it would be scary. Yeah, because she's gone off her meds, so she thinks she's going crazy. But let's take a moment to appreciate the demon faces, because they're really, really well done. I like them. I like them so much. Demon faces, chef's kiss. Mwah. (laughs) If you're not going to do practical effects... They did good for non-practical effects. Yeah, you definitely couldn't do what they do with practical No, because there's flames inside their like face, Inside right? their skulls. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a good layering technique, yeah. I think. You know, I know all of the, <laughs> the artsy CG language. I, I know that. Called layering technique. Yep. Question mark? Sure. As if you close Why one not? eye while you say it, but yep. not like a wink, because that's too brief. You just have to close one eye and... Keep it closed, and you say layering technique. Uck, 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 uck. <laughs> yes, just like that. <laughs> we did it. Look at us. <laughs> We're so professional. Greetings, <laughs> new listeners. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get any well, better. Welcome. It doesn't get any better than this. The jokes, our jokes anyway. All right, so she's scared, and she's hiding, which makes sense, especially when you're like, is this real? Am I hallucinating? Either way, I need to take a second and breathe, figure out my next... My next steps. Unfortunately for her, whether or not this guy is an actual demon, he is chasing her in the parking lot. He does not like her. So. He got looked at and took that as an offense. Oh, that never happens in real life. (laughs) (laughs) So now she's being chased by a scary dude in the parking lot. Amy falls and hits her head. And that's when Raquel shows up with the same baton that you bought on eBay. I bought three of them. Yeah, I have no idea where they are, but you were so impressed with yourself when you bought them. I'm still impressed with myself. <laughs> and now they're just somewhere. They're now, in my go bag. Oh my god. Now you and Raquel have something in common. Yeah, exactly. See how useful they are? You gotta stop walking around and saying bye to people by twisting their nipples, though. I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> Well, Raquel chases the demon away. So now I'm wondering, was Raquel running from the demon inside the club or was she luring him outside? Ambushing him. Yeah. Because she looked scared, which was a good addition. Yeah. And if you will notice, Amy does stay conscious long enough to see Raquel after she knocks around the demon guy. She's wearing a shirt with a snake on it. Oh. Representing temptation. Amy's wearing Temptation or Raquel? Raquel. Raquel's wearing Temptation. So Raquel is uh, validating Amy's, what Amy thinks is a delusion or a hallucination. Raquel is validating that and she's wearing a snake shirt. So it's tempting her to give in to the delusion. At least I hope that's what they're going for. And I didn't just imprint that onto the show. No, that's amazing. I didn't catch that, but I really like that. Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. Awesome. Okay. So then Suzanne takes Amy to the hospital to get her noggin checked out because, you know, she bumped her head. That's what best friends do. Big heart emoji. (laughs) Yes. Heart eyes emoji. (laughs) And 
where she meets the obvious bad guy. I also wrote that. <laughs> what did I write? You also meet a demon at the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> this demon is played by Tony Coran, who was in The 13th Warrior. That's how I know him. And then he was also in the Underworld series. Which should have been so much more fun than it was. The first one is, you know what? I, th- I think most of them are really fun. I like them a lot. He plays one of the three Corvinus brothers. He's the vampire one. And he has to fight his brother, the werewolf one, in the oh, third movie. I remember that. Or no, he doesn't fight him. He wants to team up with him. And then Scott Speedman has to fight the werewolf guy. The werewolf guy was stuck in a cage for eons, eons right? Yeah. That's just cruel. I don't know what you expect to happen after that thing gets out. Whatever that thing is, human. Well, you don't expect a human because if after eons, the human's dead. Anything but just a human. Whatever you have back there, whatever mystical being is going to kill you. Well, it was just a mindless animal and that's why it got locked up. No, that's a bad take. That, well, that's... the. That's, that's like pro zoo. That's the lore. This is David. Pro zoo. <laughs> yes. The smaller the cages, the better. <laughs> the more harm done to the animals, the better the zoo. David Reed. The better they taste. Tiny cages, please. Cruelty is delicious. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Amy thinks she's going crazy. Obvious bad guy is a psychiatrist and says, you know, hey, why don't we make an appointment together? So Amy does make an appointment with the guy. Which is not great. She doesn't recognize obvious bad guys the way we can. Yeah, but it's hard. It's hard when you're in that position, when you're going through some mental health stuff and somebody is in a position of authority and trying to help you as far as you can understand. And you just want to get help. And you're like, I mean, this all seems reasonable. She's literally at the hospital. Okay, He's literally bandaging her up. No, he didn't. He's a psychiatrist, not a bandager. That's true. Whatever. He's he's being nice to her and he's like, hey, we could talk. That accent. British? No, that specific accent. He's a bad guy. He's clearly a bad guy. And I'm not what just if... saying that because British people are always bad guys in American movies. <laughs> what if that's just a location in England? That's just the accent in that loca- that one that's, town. No, that's bad guy accent. Everybody in that town's a bad guy. <laughs> oh my god. So it's the so it's the town from Hot Fuzz. That's where all of the people yes. are from. His accent is the Hot Fuzz town accent. It's all about the greater good. The greater good. How can this be for the greater good? The greater good. I'm glad we figured that out. So then Amy goes back to the club where Raquel meets her outside. Yes, but it's during the day. Yes. Important point. Some time has passed. <laughs> and she didn't just go to the hospital and then go back to the club. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> Although I'm sure people have done that before. Raquel meets her there and assures her that she's not going crazy. Yes. Because Raquel can see what she sees. Yes. There's a scene where we're trying, I guess we're trying to make Raquel seem a little bit unhinged or out there. She's definitely quirky. Because she yells at a lady who's honking at her to go round, bitch. But Drive I'm on, around, bitch! But I'm on her side? Yes! There's a full other lane there. Yes, these people are talking in the middle of the road, which I would definitely find annoying, but I would drive around it and then go about my day. My favorite thing with people standing in the road is Riley and I were driving to a park to go to lunch one day, and these three people were standing in a two-lane road across the entire goddamn road. The three people... Well, that's just insane. ...were taking the whole road up. And they were all fine. It wasn't like one of them was laying in the road, (laughs) falling off their bike or whatever. No, they were just chatting. And so we yelled inside our car. Not at them. But we we basically were like, we're trying to drive around, bitch! (laughs) Move! And for the rest of the day, I would forget about it at some point, and then he would bring it up. (laughs) he'd be like or it could just be like those people standing in the road it's amazing but in this case the woman could have just easily driven around it was a whole open parking lot car park yes because it's england yes (laughs) so it's a car park you're right and there was nobody in it and why was she even there i mean it's fine wherever you were there but 
It was obviously closed, and it's not like it's a strip mall and there's something next door open. Could be. We didn't see. Maybe it's right next to the bowling alley. Like, connected. Ah. You go through the curtain, the beaded curtain from the bowling alley into the club. Yeah. So Ra- <laughs> Raquel yells and is right. They start walking somewhere, apparently, because they just, in our world, they just pop up somewhere else. But assume... They walked there and they're talking about demons and stuff. They did, so. because Raquel said, walk with me, I got some place to go. Ah, okay, great. Good catch. So they're walking, they're talking, assumedly, presumably, presume, presumably, presumably. I hope you keep all of those in. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> presumably. Uh, Raquel's telling Amy about the about the demons, maybe some rules, but definitely that you're right. And you're not crazy. And then they end up stopping outside of a psychiatrist's office where Raquel has to go talk to a psychiatrist because people think that she's crazy. Yes. So she's starting to lose Amy a little bit here. Ah, uh, but one of the things she says as they are walking up to the psychiatry building is that demons are afraid of them. Yes. The demon hunters. Because for eons or something, I can't remember what time word she used (laughs) they've been shoving wooden poles up their asses big poles big poles and the reason that i say that is because amy mentions it in a little bit so she calls back to it right so amy starts to notice that raquel might also be on her end of the sanity spectrum and then raquel unfortunately tells her like like wake up or this is real you're awake and instead of pinching her arm pinches her nipple yep ouch yep and so, so Amy's like, fucking hell. So I was starting to I was starting to get on board until you did that. But yes. One of the things oh, so before before the before the nipple pinching, Raquel actually says the name of the medication that Amy had been on. I didn't catch what the name was, but because we didn't have the subtitles on at that point. But oh, she right. mentions it. She's like, Oh yeah, this is a thing that Those are some of the rules that she's giving that the meds make you not see the demons. Yes. Raquel also asks Amy if she's ever slept with a man with cold semen. And Amy's like, uh, what? <laughs> I, I don't know. I haven't, I don't really check. And Raquel says, I guess you don't have a semen thermometer. In a way, like, she has a semen thermometer in her pocket. And is like, I guess I won't talk to you right <laughs> now. Now that I say it out loud, I guess you're not ready to know about semen thermometers. I don't think I'm ready to know about semen thermometers. And um, finally, another thing right before the nipple pinching is <laughs> Raquel says, if I don't see my therapist, they'll section me. Yeah. So it's just, there's a lot of what's real. There's a lot of what's real in this. Yep. Raquel invites Amy to come out, but Amy declines saying she has to work. She writes her phone number on Amy's arm and says, as an excuse for doing that, uh, people lose their phones. Amy gets a little too real and says, people tell you that they lose their phones. Because they don't want to talk to you. Yeah, and it really crushes Raquel. Hey, got too real. It did. A little too much. It was really sad. And you could see her little heart just crumbling. Mm -hmm. But then she recovers because that's how Raquel do. (laughs) And she says something like, we should go get drinks. Do you cocktails? We should get cocktails. You do cocktails, right? And she's just trying to act very bubbly, mm-hmm. like she had been before, but she's definitely hurt. Yeah, any day but Tuesdays before nine because I have Pilates. And this came out in 2016. Pilates in 2016? Yeah. Really? That's still going? Yes. That was a thing in the 2000s, yeah. early 2000s. For a man who's out all day, every day, you don't get out much. People do Pilates all the time. I did not know that was still a thing. There's a Pilates studio right next to the Blind Tiger. Wow. Impressive. And it is always full. Good for them. I thought bar was the thing now. Bar is also the thing now. It was CrossFit for a while. Now they're a cult. Fuck CrossFit. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Guys, if you ever want to just make me furious, show me a video of somebody doing CrossFit (laughs) pull-ups. I will lose my goddamn mind. Are you... Bonus points if that person's in Congress. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? That is not a pull-up! <laughs> Look, as someone who used to be able to do pull-ups and can no longer do pull-ups, I could probably do that, but it isn't a pull-up. Okay. Would you stop doing those goddamn CrossFit pull-ups right now? Never. <laughs> Two things I will never stop. CrossFit pull-ups and pinching people's nipples on a second <laughs> At the same time. If I can. I can I'm working on my toe dexterity so I can do the pull-ups. 
And, and while pinch you're, nipples while with you're my toes. throwing your body up against that bar, you're pinching people with your toes. Yep. Wow. Toe dexterity is first, and then aim is next. Because you just keep like poking yeah. people in the eye, yeah. getting them right in that throat. That occipital that... mapillary. Oh, is that is what, that's what that's called? called. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I've taken anatomy and physiology, and I don't think we ever covered that. I know that because of the movie Dracula Dead and Loving It. <laughs> Count Dracula. I'm sorry, my dear, but you have such a lovely occipital mapillary. What's that? This. Oh, thank you. Wow. <laughs> I guess I know you, Vila, because of a Bare Naked Ladies children's song. There so. you go. <laughs> we learn things from the strangest arenas. Whatever will make it stick. Yep. Yeah. And I can tell you that anatomy and physiology class that I took was all about memorization and not about learning a <laughs> single thing. Okay, so Raquel uh, leaves to leaves Amy on the street to go into her appointment, and Amy sees. <laughs> I can't remember what you said. I said hot demon guy across the street, and you I said, said creepy guy. <laughs> creepy guy is just staring. So we had to have a whole discussion about was he hot or How not? Was he hot? And I, don't I was get like. It. I don't know. He's got that must up hair and he was probably wearing a leather jacket and he was leaning. Like, I couldn't remember what he looked like. <laughs> I have very messy hair right now and I own a leather jacket and I can, I am fully capable of leaning if that's what does it for you. We are going to have to take a picture of you in that <laughs> jacket leaning somewhere wearing your shorts also. Good idea. And your jumpy socks. My jumpy socks. I love that it's like in the 50s and you are bundled up like it's gonna like it's snowing inside and I'm wearing booty shorts and a halter top. <laughs> <laughs> you are not. <laughs> I would definitely take a picture of that. <laughs> it's cold. I'm not that cold. <laughs> it's because you have nine layers on. I'm learning how to layer. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I need to listen to a bare naked lady song about layering. <laughs> Oh my god, if they have one, please somebody let me know about it in the next two weeks, which will be too late by the time this yeah. actually drops, <laughs> but I have to learn how to layer properly. Let her know yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it! You got on a plane yesterday. Damn it! I'm gonna be so cold! <laughs> or too hot and sweating, I can't tell! Because <laughs> I don't know how to properly layer. This is what happens, guys. Just in general. <laughs> to everyone. <laughs> We see Amy at work. She's working at the bowling alley. Jake is trying to fix something in the cutest whack-a-mole machine I have ever seen. How on earth would you be able to get yourself to whack those moles? I don't know. You know what? Adorable plush moles. The whole time that I was looking at this, they are little plush. No, they're big plush moles. They are freaking adorable. No one would ever whack them. People would steal them, though. Oh, yeah. 100%. 100% there would be no moles and it would just be whatever is inside the mole because he pulls one out that got stuck in the machine. That's what he was working on. And he puts his hand in it like it's a little puppet. Those things would be gone so fast. <laughs> you get a full bowling alley, which we never see it being full, but let's pretend. And you get a couple of drinks in people and that's when people get to the point where they want to just snatch things. Yeah. Those things would be gone. In a heartbeat. You'd have to just put little googly eyes on the whatever the thing that pops the... <laughs> <laughs> whatever that mechanical piece is. And maybe a little nose and some little buck teeth. And be like, these are the moles now, guys. All of the puppets got stolen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they talk a little bit. It's Jake hitting on her. Hitting on Amy some more. Yeah. In this one, my main... my Really, my only note is uh, Jake is problematic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The first scene, it could be a little bit of he's just describing drugs because he's a drug guy. And this one, he's a little problematic. Yeah. This is an interesting character because so far he is absolutely problematic and he will not get better. But he doesn't feel dangerous, which is a weird line <laughs> to be walking. Yeah, it is definitely a fine line. And I don't know how long he's going to be able to walk it. No. We did not say who Jake was. Oh, that's right. Jake is played by Lewis Reeves. He was in I May Destroy You. He was. Yeah. 
a really oh. awful character in that as well. Yeah. Oh no. Remembering which character he was makes me think he's not going to walk this line for very long. Oh, <laughs> totally forgot. Yeah, if you guys have not seen I May Destroy You, Woo. it is phenomenal and will also rip your heart out. <laughs> that show may destroy you. Yep. And you know what? You should watch it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, take care of you. But if you're not in a really bad place, you should watch it. <laughs> then uh, if you need a break from that show, you can watch In Bruges. I don't know what that is. Oh, uh, that one will also wreck you emotionally. Well, then why would you do that? <laughs> why would you go from from one to the other? Make a week of it. Yeah, so he's being problematic but fixes the mechanical thing. She walks away and that's kind of the end of that scene or the end of that, that piece. Now we see Raquel at home. She has a very cool, or I think it's very cool to have a fish tank where a TV would be in most bedrooms. Oh man, I miss that. And she's staring at... The there's fish a, tank. There's a lot going on in her room. It's very busy. It is. In a good way. Yes. Her brother comes in and says, oh, hey, um, it seems like you were ignoring me. And she says, I was ignoring you. <laughs> so they have a little heart to heart. He lays down on her bed and she tells him about meeting a new girl. And he's like, that's great. You're making friends. That's good. She's like, but then I pinched her nipple. And instead of being like, that's the weirdest fucking thing. He says, well, if... Pinching nipples goes out of style. That's pretty much my go-to move. So we're both going to be in trouble. And I'm like, oh no, another heart eyes emoji. <laughs> Love this. This is so good. They they kind of have this little moment. And then he's like, pizza's ready. And then he pops out of the room. What else did you notice in her room? Not much. Oh, you just noticed it was busy? Yeah, I just, it was sensory overload for I me. See. <laughs> All right. Back at the bowling alley, Amy calls her roommate to come get her from work. It is the end of her shift. She asks Suzanne to come get her. Suzanne is at home with the um, the hair guy from the club last night. <laughs> and I wrote, I thought he was a, a demon. So I wrote, <laughs> the guy from the club, the hair guy from the club is there uh, with his cold semen. I'm <laughs> assuming, but being a demon probably makes him as cool as he thinks he is. So he's probably not a demon. <laughs> Yeah, and at that point, Amy could see demon faces, and he didn't have a demon face. That's true. But. That's true. We'll come back to that. It's later. also true. But anyway, I had a whole journey with this. <laughs> he was on screen for half a second, and I'm, I went on this entire journey about him. Uh, Suzanne tells Amy that she'll come get her in 10 minutes, which is great. Jake leaves. We hear him say bye. I think it's Jake. We hear somebody say bye. And so Amy's at the bowling alley by herself. Just doing, you know, those little putting the pens from here to here. Whatever you do to kill 10 minutes while you're waiting <laughs> at work. And someone throws a bowling ball down one of the lanes. It's a very good shot of the ball rolling because the, the finger hole placement is perfectly circular. Ah. Probably CGI because I don't know how you get an actual bowling ball to roll perfectly like that. Probably by being a good bowler. It wouldn't be on the side. It would be... Would it? Round and round. Because mm. that's how you... That's how what you if you roll. twist it? I don't... Then it would be twisty. I'm not a good bowler. I'm an expert bowler. Oh. I was in a league for a while, if you remember. Oh, vaguely. <laughs> wow. I have my own shoes. That's right. Yeah. How long did that go on? One season. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I had forgotten about that, but you're right. Yeah. Then a plague hit. Yeah. That really did... Bowling alley's not where you want to be in a plague. Did really fuck up a lot of stuff. Like, <laughs> like bowling, my bowling, teams. my bowling league. Wow, you should get it. You should start an outdoor bowling league. Sounds great. Isn't that bocce ball? I was thinking shuffleboard. Shuffleboard. Uh, I'm not sure what bocce ball is. There's no pins involved. I don't think it's just balls throwing balls at balls. Okay, like croquet. Well, croquet has but with throwing instead of mallets. All right, and shuffleboard is discs and On clay pushers. Yeah, pushers. You know. That's drug dealers? <laughs> yep. You get your drug dealer. You do that wheelbarrow thing. Put his face on the <laughs> shuffleboard <laughs> disc. That seems like a bad game. Very slow. <laughs> All right. This is where you yelled at the TV both times we watched it because the ball hits the pins and <laughs> says something like strike. Strike! And no, there were still two pins standing. That was not a strike. And then I think in the next scene that they show us, all of the pens are down. Yeah. They use a little movie magic to make that a strike. 
I take my bowling very seriously. I was in a league once. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I remember that now. <laughs> I didn't forget even a little bit. I have my own shoes. <laughs> Now you can model your messy hair, your shorts, your bowling shoes, and your leather jacket from the 80s. I mean, the 90s to everybody. I, okay. I also have a leather jacket from the early 2000s. <laughs> Which I cannot picture, but it cannot be good. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so Amy goes to, at first I think she says, hey, we're closed. Which I don't know what else you say when you're just like, what the fuck? Huh. And... Is it the guy from the parking lot? It is the guy from the parking lot. Okay. He comes around the corner or whatever. With and, his fiery face. Yes. And she's like, oh, shit. And he's like, hey, I'm going to kill you. And she's like, hey, don't kill me. He's like, you're a seer, so I've got to kill you. And she's like, I don't even know what that is. And he's like, ah, sucks to be you. I'm going to kill you anyway. He wants you gone. Yes. She's like, who? He's like, dad, don't ask me, boss. I'm just a hired man. Hey, she says, who's he? And he says, obviously the psychiatrist that you were talking to. <laughs> Have you heard his accent? He's from the Hot Fuzz Village. <laughs> canon. He's a bad guy. Stamp it. It is now canon. He hangs out with Timothy Dalton. Who's Timothy Dalton? Uh, well, he was James Bond for a while. Two movies, I think. Maybe three. Uh, but then he was also the grocer in the Hot Fuzz Village. That would have been a shorter distance for me to get to. <laughs> Like, you didn't ask, what do you know him from? You just said, who is he? That's true. It's really your fault if you think about it. <laughs> Most of me not remembering people's faces is my fault. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. I'm never going to meet any of these people. And if I do, I won't know. <laughs> <laughs> Carl Urban lives in this building. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Which, okay. Does he have a dog? Because I might re recognize the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I know where all of the dogs in this place live. Ugh. So he chases her. She runs down the uh, bowling lane, which is honestly too slick for either of them That's to be doing. That's what I kept <laughs> thinking. Movie magic. I was like, they wax those things, right? Oh my gosh. They're so slick. And the only reason I know is because just like everyone else who's ever bowled, I've accidentally stepped over that little <laughs> bitty line. It almost and, died. Yep. <laughs> it was about the last thing that I did in my life. <laughs> yeah, but they're running. So she dives and goes where the pins go. Fortunately. Strike! Who do you think you are? I am! Oh my gosh. Fortunately, those teeth weren't coming down. Everything was shut off. I feel like that would just crush you. I have no idea. I don't either. It probably wouldn't. That seems insane. Probably why would, would you, hurt. Why would you have that kind of pressure? <laughs> Just to put pens down automatically. <laughs> right. I would even go down to the floor. <laughs> I don't know, but somebody make that movie or tell me which movie it is. If they dive into the bowling alley machine thing and then get crushed. There's a bowling alley thing in Constantine. Is there? I think so. No. He, doesn't he live in the back of a bowling alley? Does he? I think so. I thought he lived in a giant apartment with huge ceilings. Maybe he knows somebody who lives in the back of a bowling alley. Back of bowling alleys are mystical places. Constantine does not work in a bowling alley. <laughs> did I say work? I, meant, I, said, I thought I said live. You did say live, but then you said work. And yeah. then you said know somebody who works? Yeah. Maybe you know somebody who works there. Maybe. But anyway, we do get a nice view of the back of the bowling alley here. Yeah. We can see how the inner workings. We see how the sausage is made. Yeah, it is a magical place. The bowling sausage is made. Yeah. <laughs> We have a really good tense scene of her hiding in the back. It is really good. So she's running and she gets away from the guy in enough. Oh, she hits him with a pin, which is how she gets away from him because he catches up with her when she slides. She's running. She's away from him. She hides. He comes up. It's a great shot because you can see where she's hiding and then you can see through the bowling pins that are hanging up there yeah. along the wall. I don't know why that would be how you did that, but okay. And he, you can see his face through the bowling pins, but he doesn't see her. And he turns around and walks away. So eventually she comes out. But, psych, he knew she was there. And he's going to get her. How do they get outside? She runs away. Okay. He, he does not get her. She runs away. Oh. He follows. And in a just wonderfully serendipitous timing, Suzanne hits him with the car. Yep. It's a yellow bug. It's great. So I guess Amy is still running. 
I, don't I guess she you. just kept going. Yeah. yeah. She didn't look behind her. Because she doesn't show back up for a few moments. Uh, Suzanne gets out of the car because she's just hit a guy. And she's like, oh, God. Oh, shit. Are you okay? Probably not. You really whacked him. Comes around. Oh, and he's behind her car. So she, like, went over him. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't a hit and push you forward. It was a hit and kadonk, kadonk, kadonk. <laughs> it was practically the um, Jeep running over the guy in <laughs> Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. Wow. <laughs> Don't watch that movie, guys. It's terrible. Watch that movie. It's amazing. Don't watch that movie. It's practically mostly the first movie and then a little bit of the second movie. It's, pra- it's mostly the first movie, but then it's also... Carpet Day! Huh? No! No! Which is wild. But uh, so as Amy's dealing with this demon, who I don't know that we know his name. We don't really know any of the demon's names yet. No. Okay. She's asking if he's okay. He isn't. He makes eye contact with her, which transfers the demon just like black oil in the X-Files. But we learned that's not how it transfers in the X-Files. It's touch. You got to touch. Was she touching him here? No, not here. In the X Files, you have to touch them. And here, it was just eye contact. I was just wondering because I couldn't remember. I didn't know if she was like, "Are you okay?" No, nah, she was just looking at him. Okay, well, so I guess not just like black oil. I don't think I learned that. <laughs> <laughs> Amy appears and asks if Suzanne is okay, and she says something like, "I guess," but I totally have just murdered this guy with my car. It's not murder if it's an accident. Manslaughter. I just manslaughtered this guy with my car. (laughs) It's just an accident. Uh, They end up calling the authorities, and while everyone is getting checked out, Amy tries to get Raquel's phone number. But remember, Raquel wrote her phone number on Amy's arm, and Amy is wearing two long sleeve shirts layered, and she can't get her sleeves up enough to see the whole number, so she ends up struggling with her tops takes them all off, is standing there in her bra, calls Raquel, but doesn't get to Raquel because Raquel is At not, not answering her phone because it is Tuesday before nine, <laughs> which means that the bowling alley Close closed us. at like 8 p.m. Wow. On a Tuesday. It's early. It feels early. Not feels that we've early. gone to a bowling alley. It must and... not be a league night. True. And so all of this is happening. And then she so after she leaves the phone, the voicemail because she realizes what day it is she also realizes she's just standing there in her bra (laughs) we go home with amy she's in her pjs which are just a shirt is it a it's a button-up shirt it's a pajama shirt okay and she because she's got matching little shorts it's like a little set all right that's a lot better than i was just picturing like a men's button-up shirt for some reason which doesn't seem like it'd be good pajamas not if you're not having sex with the guy first i see but suzanne comes in Obviously possessed. We know she's possessed, but she does not have demon face. Mm -mm. So, interesting. If it was just an oversight, or can they turn demon face on and off? I was wondering the same thing, not if it was an oversight, because I don't think so. I don't think that's how they were playing it. I'm wondering if it takes a little while for the demon to take control control or to like get settled in. Well, obvious bad guy was in the scene at the accident scene. And they look at each other, and he, like, shakes his head yes. Like, kill her, basically. And that's when we learn he's the obvious bad guy. That's when we learn obvious bad guy is a bad guy. Right. But she's definitely possessed in that scene. Maybe once they show themselves the first time it's permanent. I don't know. Is any of this really happening? Ooh. Are they crazy? Well, Suzanne does try to kill her with a belt. Right. And I don't want to say they're crazy, because... That's okay. really right. problematic. Problematic vocabulary, yes, but but they the, but the show's called Crazy Head. I know it's a it's it's a problem. <laughs> but she tries to strangle Amy. Right, Amy is pretending to take off makeup in the mirror, oh. <laughs> and <laughs> that's what was going on. Yes, and Suzanne is behind her, like you said, and you said obviously possessed, and she is because we we're like we can see that this is not the same body language. This is all different. But then. Amy's like, what? What, are you, what do you want? What are you doing? Stop being weird. <laughs> <laughs> and Suzanne says, do you want a belt with that? She said, so Amy's weird. like, a belt with my pajamas? Why would I want a belt with my pajamas? <laughs> Which should have tipped her off more than anything else. Yeah. And she's 
still look, she looks, she turns around to look at Suzanne. Suzanne has still not shown herself to be a demon, but that's when she looks back into the mirror and continues to pretend to take off her makeup. <laughs> I did not have any idea what she was doing. That's what she was doing. She was pretending to take off her makeup. If you noticed, there was no makeup on that makeup wipe. Okay. It was also so dry because if it was wet, it would have taken off her makeup and then they would have had to reapply it and then she would have looked weirdly off. Yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> they struggle, they fight. Yeah. Uh, Amy sprays her in the face with some hairspray, which gives her time to get to the bathroom and shove that giant lock on the bathroom door. Mm -hmm. I guess British locks are huge. I guess. There's a big sliding bolt. It really was. I was noticing that too. I was like, this is a sturdy lock. Yeah. And then Suzanne Demon tries a trick. Yes. It's really, oh, I'm so sorry. It's really me. I don't know what's going on. Can you help me? And uh, eventually losing her, their temper, kicking in the door. But Amy has escaped out the window. Yes. And they made if, it. If you notice during this whole scene, the closed caption put scary music uh. in brackets at the bottom. <laughs> Nice. Uh, and Amy has escaped and made it to Jake's place in her pajamas and socks, no shoes. And Jake stays problematic. He touches her face with a raw hot dog he's eating. That's as problematic as it gets. Apparently showing up to someone's house without your shoes on is it's a, a green, green light. light for a booty call. England, man. So I went on a whole tangent and probably missed stuff in the next scene on this also. <laughs> So if arriving at someone's house without your shoes on is a green light for a booty call, does that mean this happens to Jake often or that Jake fantasizes about this scenario happening often? Well, it's definitely not the first one. I wonder if Matt tells him that that's what it is. It's or Matt. Matt is the hair guy. Oh. Have you ever shown up to somebody's house without shoes on? For any reason. No, I'm not a weirdo. I'm incredibly normal. <laughs> like, okay, when would I have shown up at somebody's house without shoes on? If we were coming back together from the beach, I might not have my shoes on. But that would just, I would already have been there. Or if I was a child going from my house to the next door neighbor's house. <laughs> I think that's about it. Okay. Those seem somewhat reasonable. I'm not as... What did you say? You're just a very normal guy? I am incredibly normal. I guess I'm not as incredibly normal as you because I have a couple of scenarios where I could see no shoes being on. Yep. Not nearly as normal as me. Nope. I'm have. a normalist. Yep. Have you ever climbed out of a bathroom window? I want to say yes. I've definitely climbed in bathroom windows. To your house or to someone else's house? Is this problematic? <laughs> no. My house. Lock yourself out. I know which window is open. Mm hmm I don't know if... Have I... Have I ever been in a bathroom with a, with a window big enough to crawl in or out of? <laughs> and that might be no. Hmm. Interesting. I've climbed in my own house windows. Remember when I used to lock myself out of that old apartment? Yes. That was wild. One day, don't do this, guys. I couldn't drag the picnic table over to stand on to the entranceway roof in order to get into my second floor apartment. Because I knew the windows were open. So I stacked some chairs and garbage cans together and climbed on top of all of those. It was... Not normal. Successful. Well, I couldn't get in otherwise. So I should have just made a second key and put it in one of those <laughs> key holder things that you magnetized to your car. But, you definitely should have done something different. But I didn't. So she, she's like, no, Jake, this is not a booty call. And he's like, are you sure? And she's like, I'm very sure. And he's like, oh, man. All right, come on in. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, Amy goes to meet Raquel, but not for coffee because coffee makes Raquel shit. Big time. Yep. So they go for tea. Amy asks Raquel for help. It turns out they need to exercise Suzanne. So after tea, that doesn't make Raquel shit. <laughs> They go back to Raquel's house and meet her brother again, Tyler. Tyler, played by Arenze Keen, who was in uh, Youngers, I assume is a British TV show. Yep. Looks like a bunch of British stuff. Definitely. Hm. He was Lola in Lola. Oh. I don't know what that is, but it has an 8.4. Wow. All right. And he's hot. You should watch it. Um, so he's like, oh, you are Amy. And Amy's like, yes, I am Amy. And then Raquel comes in and talks about how Tyler was 
obsessed with their mom's vagina, what he which he called a foo-foo. And he says, Can we talk? Can we talk over here in private, please? Raquel decides to come in and just embarrass everybody. Can you two please stop undressing each other That's with your right. eyes? That's right. That was the first thing she said. It was pretty amazing. That's when she asks for the keys to his car and he says, I'm going to make a lasagna. And she says, we have to, we're going to a nail bar because that's what girls do. <laughs> he doesn't know anything about girls. <laughs> so he ends up giving her the, the keys, which is great. And says that the belt is slipping. The fan belt. The fan, fan belt is slipping. slipping. That's and rough. I guess. Bad when your belt slip. Makes problems. <laughs> doesn't seem like that's what it should be doing. It apparently makes a lot of weird sounds. It does. Yeah. I don't know. I've had loose belts before. They're not fun. On your pants? On cars. Around your neck because your friend's trying to get you to wear belts with your PJs? Just the cars. Okay. Every other belt is perfect. Oh. Because I'm normal. I see. <laughs> Sorry. Only weirdos don't have perfect belts. <laughs> oh, whoa. That's a stance, huh? Yeah, I'm taking a strong stance on this. It's your your uh, uh, one-issue voter and it's... <laughs> Your belt's not perfect. You're a weirdo. weirdo. Well, I'm glad you have a stance, I guess. <laughs> it's good to have priorities and stances. It is. Is this part of your moral code? It's the entirety of my moral code. <laughs> you have nothing else. There doesn't feel like there's a lot of nuance in that. Uh, why should there be? That's <laughs> It's a moral code. There's no room for nuance in a moral code. There isn't? No. Uh, just having consideration for people with weird belts. Weird, imperfect belts. <laughs> no time for that. Okay, we gotta talk more about this moral code. <laughs> Is it a type of belt? It's imperfect. How do you feel about braided belts? Oh, not good. <laughs> not good at all. So do they have to be leather belts? I mean, they don't have to be. So there is nuance. No. Perfect. <laughs> imperfect. Zero nuance. Oh, man. Well, not only do none of my pants have belt loops, they have no pockets. And so either way, I guess. I'm... You're okay so far. I don't know. Uh, the two go to snatch Suzanne. Who we see in her pink fuzzy slippers. That's so we right. know what time it is. That's right. She's just chilling, eating her canned peaches. Millions of peaches. <laughs> The buzzer rings. Suzanne goes to the front door to open the door. She finds a pizza box. She's like, hmm, okay. As she goes to grab the pizza box, she is snatched. I guess they hit her with the baton. I guess, because she is definitely out in the next scene. You would think stun gun or taser, but I think you hear the baton unclack. Mm. Would you let a person you just met... Baton your best friend? Yeah. No, of course not. It's rude. <laughs> it is rude, but so is tasering. It's less rude. Is it? There's no concussion I guess possibility. Yeah. With... And it's, and Suzanne was basically concussed earlier, which is why, or we think she could have been when she hit the other guy, which is why she got all checked out and uh, why she could have been acting weird. I thought it was shock. Shock makes your skin turn blue. That's true. Shock is a specific thing. That is not what I'm thinking of. But being rattled emotionally because you hit a guy with your car. I thought that's what it was. Emotional shock? Emotional shock. We had to learn the differences between emotional and physiological shock a lot in our first aid course. Because we are first aid certified. We are. New listeners. <laughs> yes. If you ever get hit by a car in front of us, we can help. We'll have to try to do something. <laughs> And we'll be better at some things than others. <laughs> but we'll be better at all of it than most people. That's right. All right. So as they are dragging Suzanne through the car park. Yeah, there you the... go. Because <laughs> it's British. Yep. And tossing her in the trunk, some demons arrive. But then the creepy guy comes to save him. Yeah. And he's doing all kinds of magic. Was he, I was still stuck on Raquel saying right before they get into the fight that her mask makes her face smell like rubbery balls. This is a line she says at least four times in this episode. She says all of her lines at least four times in this true. episode. But yes, okay, so what kind of magic was he doing? Telekinesis. He was making guys fly through the sky with his hands and his brain. Yes. And Amy takes notice. Do you need to guide with your hands or is that like an intermediate step? I think it's uh, something that helps you focus. 
That would make sense. I think all the work is happening in your brain, but you got to really like focus and think about it, and that just kind of helps. It's like a sight. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. That's how I, I feel. I don't know about why it. I made that sound. Me neither. Well, I'm not as perfect as you, so. You're not as normal as me. I am not claiming that I'm perfect, just that I'm incredibly normal. Well, I'm not as normal as because you. Because that's what normal people do. They insist that they are normal. I think so. I mean, a lot of people have told me that. That they're normal? Yeah. Oh. Well, none of them are as normal as me. Okay. They didn't qualify it against you, so. It's good, because they'd be wrong. All right, so the telekinesis stuff is happening. The demons are at bay. Amy realizes that the one demon's not actually after them or doesn't seem to be quite as after them or after them in the same way. Something's different with this guy. He's not like the other demons. He's not. Because that's when Raquel says, no, I thought I told you some demons aren't as bad as other demons. No, you didn't tell me that. Oh, well. And that guy made stuff fly with his brain. Oh, we, some demons have extra powers. I thought I told you that. No, you didn't. <laughs> right. <laughs> so during that walk to the psychiatrist's office earlier, there was a lot of information left out. Yes, there was not a lot shared. So they're driving away. They get away from all of the demons, including the one who says, Hello, Raquel. You missed that. Oh, I did. Yep. And they're talking. As they stop at a stoplight, we start to hear Suzanne in the trunk because she's woken she's up. woken up. And surprise, surprise, hair guy pulls up next to them. Ugh, fucking Matt. So... <laughs> he says so he rolls down his window and says hey amy or something amy's like oh it's him pretend you don't see him so raquel's doing a great job of completely <laughs> ignoring this guy eyes on the road she's just looking ahead that's when matt rolls down the window and knocks on the knocks on the window weirdo behavior such a weirdo so now amy has to acknowledge it because someone's knocking on your window it would be weird for you to not acknowledge it yes and she's like, oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Amy Raquel is still st ignoring him. <laughs> yes, because Amy knows that it would be weirdo behavior to not acknowledge it at that point. And Amy is normal, like me. Oh. Raquel's weirdo. I love Raquel. Raquel's weirdo in a good way, but, you know, she's not as normal as me and Amy. I see. So now they're talking, but Suzanne is making noise in the back. So we go through this series a couple of times. Every time that the light changes green, Amy goes, go! <laughs> yeah. Which is a very normal person thing to do. Well, yes. When the person that you're in the car with is sitting stock still at a green light, <laughs> you yell at them to go. <laughs> they get to the second light and and he's like, what is that in your tr your trunk? I'm not sure at which Boot. one of these. One yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure at which one of these stops he asks about it and Raquel that's when Raquel is like I can't ignore this guy anymore it's my dog this car is making all kinds of fucked up noises that is such a bad excuse for the noise the amazing thing is when they're stopped the car is not making noises it, it is a little it just couldn't be because of you know tv it should have been making so many noises they, they turned the volume down on the they should have turned them up Oh my gosh, I was listening to a podcast. So you couldn't hear what Matt was saying. I was listening to a podcast the other day and they're like, let's play this clip. And they play the clip and they play the clip at the regular sound. But when the two hosts started talking to each other, they kept the music just as loud. And I was like, I don't know who to focus on now. <laughs> I can't do this. You guys have to help me out. Wow. This is too much. Can you turn it down a little so I at least know what to focus on? Nice. It was, it wasn't Calliope music, but it may as well have been. That's how <laughs> much I couldn't focus on anything. Oh, it was oh, fun with podcasting. But yeah, so she's at the next light. She's like, isn't it rude to keep your dog in the trunk? And this is where they do another problematic thing where she's like, it's my pit bull and he's going to eat your face if I let him out. I'm like, ugh, stop it. Look, any dog that's been in the boot of a car for too long is going to eat somebody's face when they get out. They eventually get away from this guy. We then cut to obvious bad guy, who I'm going to have to write his name down eventually. His name is not Sawyer. His name is Callum. Callum. That's, see? He even has a bad guy name. So he is dressing down his goons because they let Kel and Amy go. And that's when they mentioned Sawyer. We learned Sawyer's name. Yes. <laughs> they tell the psychiatrist it was Sawyer. Exclamation point is how I wrote that sentence. It's a good sentence because <laughs> they all know who Sawyer is. We just know him as creepy guy or, you know, hot guy. 
and he is played by Luke Allen Gale, who you will know from Captain America, the first Avenger, as Army Heckler. <laughs> Bet you I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else don't I know him from? Final Fantasy fourteen. Is that a movie? No, that is Shadowbringers. Must be an expansion pack. Okay. Uh, also, he is the voice in a lot of video games. Wow. The only one of these images that I recognize is the one we're actually watching right now. <laughs> oh, what is that? The Secret World of... Arietti? Arietti. Hmm, that looks like a... Miyazaki? Yep. That's what it looks like. That's probably because it is... Studio Ghibli? Not a Miyazaki. It is a Miyazaki. He did write it. <laughs> Look at that. I've never seen one, but I recognize the art. They're, they are very distinct. Yep. They have a style. He beats the ever-living hell out of one of his guys after telegraphing it. You're going to need facial reconstruction. That guy should have seen this coming. He was an idiot. Did you see that? The moment he was on camera, I was like, <laughs> this guy's no, an idiot. <laughs> you're not going to last long in this world. <laughs> then we cut over. Oh, they mentioned Sawyer and Callum is bitching about Sawyer. I'm doing this for all of us. Why can't that boy see? But he is, just to be fair... He is mad because they took him away from his super fancy party to get in, his award for best psychiatrist in all the land or whatever. In the United Kingdom. In the Kingdom of Britain. In East Saxony. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm sorry, East Anglia. Well, I'm glad he didn't chip his brand new phallic award. <laughs> so then we cut over to Sawyer, who's very beat up. Apparently, we didn't see him get away from the other guys, but... Apparently they got in some good licks on him Apparently. and then he got away and he's just beat up and he's taking his shirt off and we see a picture of Raquel in his hovel. Shitty little hovel. We see him looking at himself in a broken glass mirror. So he definitely has some anger issues. Oh, you think he did that? Yes. I see. I mean, I guess somebody else could have done it, but that's not what I'm getting here. Although to be fair, if it wasn't going to be an anger thing, I mean, look, all I know about being at a guy's hovel with things broken like that is usually because they punched a hole in the wall or something. So that's where my mind goes. But what if he was just practicing his telekinesis? I mean, you got to learn that stuff somehow, right? What if he was like doing his little hand things and then it kind of got, he got distracted and he threw his Captain America statue into the mirror and it broke? I see. All right. Yes. So framed picture of Raquel, but it's on the ground. The end. Meanwhile, Raquel and Amy arrive wherever, and Raquel asks Amy about Suzanne. Amy tells Raquel Suzanne was always there, even when it was bad for her. It is a good setup, because otherwise, how could you talk yourself into going this hard this fast? I guess, yeah. I think it, I appreciate that they gave the backstory. Suzanne's always been there for me, even when she didn't, even when she probably shouldn't have, or it would have been better for her not to. Yeah, because we do know that Amy has had psychological problems. Yeah, and Suzanne has always been there with her. So if you really think that your friend, it just solidifies how best friends they are. Because if you are just like their roommates, you'd be like, why? This is real fast. This is escalated incredibly quickly. But if you truly believe that your friend, best friend who's been there with you for all of your life that you can remember is possessed by a demon you absolutely want to get that fucking demon out of her and get her back and you'll do whatever you can especially if you're normal like amy <laughs> yep so they drag suzanne out of, out into the warehouse so we're back at the beginning for the exorcism and that's when we see them with their clown masks and peeing on your friend they go through the whole exorcism, which is basically, I think I said basically too many times. <laughs> so they go through the whole exorcism, which... Via Google. Yes. Raquel has Googled how to perform. As Amy is peeing on her friend, Raquel is reading Latin. Mm -hmm. Cutting and burning some hair. Yes. And then they wait and nothing happens. And Amy says... Why is nothing happening? And Raquel's like, yeah, sometimes it takes a little while. And Amy says, you weren't really pronouncing that right, which is probably correct. But also, how would you know? I mean, we can all assume nobody's pronouncing Latin right. But would we know it if they were? I have no idea. The answer is no. Okay. <laughs> uh, they do bicker 
about brownies and recipes and chocolate cake. I love that Amy says, you could be reading a, a brownie recipe. And Raquel's like, they didn't have brownies in Rome. Well, they probably did have some sort of chocolate cake. Which is also wrong. Why? Chocolate is South American. Nobody had chocolate until white people, you know, discovered the new world. There was no chocolate anywhere, except for in South America. And it was a drink, not a... It was. Brownies. Chocolate and sugar didn't exist. Chocolate made sense. Oranges, lemons, tomatoes, potatoes, and rice had not been discovered. Salt was available, but pepper and other spices were not. And this is uh, about ancient Greece. Wow. Yeah. That makes sense. I was just curious. There was a secretly incredibly fascinating about chocolate. Oh, it makes sense saying it. Because, yeah, that's too far, too far removed. Wrong climates. So I guess they wouldn't have had a chocolate cake. Yeah. They would have had a, they wouldn't have had a cake because they didn't have sugar. They didn't have sugar. Hmm. Interesting. They'd have a very bland, cakey mixture of something. (laughs) Um, Still nothing happens, but while they are bickering, Suzanne's body starts convulsing and then it elevates. It's not the word. Levitates. And then it levitates. Gives a warning. Do you remember what it said? Oh, looks at Raquel and says, like, your time is coming. That's right. Bitch. Right, (laughs) right. I know it was very poignant, but like I couldn't remember. Like Freddy Krueger. <laughs> right. Bitch. <laughs> then Suzanne's body falls down back to the concrete floor. She's not moving. Amy is smacking at her or something. And then we get the death rattle, the final breath. Suzanne is dead. Amy is upset, of course. Raquel looks very uncertain about what to do because she did not expect the pee exorcism to kill Suzanne. I don't think she's ever done an exorcism before. But she also, I mean, would you have expected a pee exorcism to kill somebody? Of course not. I would have expected an exorcism to exercise. Right. Now, if she had gotten up in her little demon body and done a bunch of jumping jacks, started calisthenics, I would have been like, okay, different spelling of exercise, but we did it. We did a thing. No, you don't like that? (laughs) No, because I'm normal. All right. Well, the lesson of this whole episode is that pee exorcisms can be lethal. I'm glad we learned a lesson. (laughs) Also, don't show up to people's house without your shoes on unless it's a booty call. Oh, we're learning that lesson too. Yep. I guess that's also a lesson. I like... But that one is me with question mark face. Okay. I like this direction though. What lesson did we learn? Uh, So you learned that lesson. I say I will learn the lesson of... I'll figure one out for next episode. Okay. (laughs) Well, I hope you guys like Crazy Head so far and join us again in a week. Oh, where can they watch it? Netflix. Yes. Watch Mm -hmm. it with us on Netflix. Okay, bye. The Rotating Cast Files is produced by Kristen Riley and Dave Reed. Edited by Dave Reed. Thanks for being here. And if you enjoyed the episode, please rate, review, and subscribe. If you could go to Apple Podcasts. And please, please, please go rate and review us. Give us five stars. Tell us that we're doing magnificent things. Oh Tell us that we are doing the impossible with podcasting. Wow. We would love you for it. Or even easier, tell people about us. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Cast Files. We also auto post to YouTube. So if that's your streaming service of choice, or if you like closed captions, they are available there. And finally, email us at therotatingcastfiles at gmail.com. 